Hey all, Ron here from Military Images Magazine with a new episode of Life on the Civil War Research Trail. The last few days I've been researching the Battle of Cheat Mountain, which occurred in Western Virginia in the fall of 1861. But during the course of my research, I found out about the man pictured here, Nathan Kimball, one of the Union officers who was at the Battle of Cheat Mountain. And I have to say, one of the things that I love about the research that I do is learning about officers who inspire and men who inspire due to their actions and their gallantry. They stand up when it's time to stand up, when the moment counts. And so I went down the research rabbit hole and wanted to learn a little bit more about Nathan Kimball. He's born in Fredericksburg, Indiana, attends Indiana Asbury College, which today is DePauw University. He studied medicine at the University of Louisville, began a career as a doctor. All of this occurs in the 1840s. The Mexican War interrupts his life and his fledgling practice. He steps aside, he pauses his career, and raises a volunteer company that becomes part of the 2nd Indiana Infantry. Kimball is elected captain by the men, and he goes on to distinguish himself at the Battle of Buena Vista, where he rallied his company while the rest of the regiment crumbled and fled in disorder. After the Mexican War, which he survives, Kimball returns to Indiana and picks up where he left off with his medical practice. In 1854, he joins the Republican Party, the new Republican Party, and becomes active in politics. Seven years later, the war breaks out and Kimball does a repeat of his Mexican War experience. He puts a pause on his career, and he raises an infantry company. But this time, he's not the captain of a company. The governor of the state, Oliver Morton, appoints him as the colonel of the 14th Indiana. This is in June of 1861. Kimball goes on to lead his regiment in the Western Virginia campaign that fall, and participates in his first combat. This is at the Battle of Cheat Mountain, where I learned about him. Cheat Mountain is the first field assignment, the first wartime campaign of General Robert E. Lee. Lee has this idea to launch a two-pronged attack against Union forces arrayed along the summit of Cheat Mountain and nearby Elk Water. But poor communications and inclement weather cause him to lose. The Confederate forces are pushed back. And although it can be fairly said that Kimball was not the overall commander and so doesn't get the overall victory, he certainly did his part in leading his 14th Indiana against Lee's army. Just a few months later, in the spring of 1862, Kimball is now a brigade commander in the Shenandoah Valley, and he leads his men into the Battle of Kernstown. During the second day of the fight, the commander of the division, Brigadier General James Shields, suffers a wound as and is incapacitated. Nathan Kimball takes over command, he rallies his men and leads a counterattack that repulses Stonewall Jackson's forces. As a result of this action, Kimball receives his brigadier star by a grateful Union command. So it can be fairly stated that Kimball has defeated both Lee and Jackson. Now, how many Union soldiers can say that? Not many, if any. Now, Kimball is not finished. At Antietam, his men formed the right of the division during assaults on the sunken road. It is a terrible day. His brigade suffers severe losses, but they hold their ground and repel the Confederates in their front. 
By the end of the fight in the sunken road, Kimball's men have captured 300 rebels and several stands of Confederate colors. Oh, and there's another thing. They come away with a nom de guerre, the Gibraltar Brigade, for standing steadfast against the Confederates. A few months later at Fredericksburg, Kimball suffers a serious thigh wound that takes him out of action into the spring of 1863. During his recuperation back home in Indiana, the Republicans nominate him to run for the state's lieutenant governor, but he politely declines. He's not interested. He's ready to get back to his men and fight. And so he does. Kimball goes on to command during the siege of Vicksburg, the Atlanta campaign, and the late war Tennessee battles of Franklin and Nashville. Kimball ends the war in August of 1865 with a major general's brevet. He goes on to a variety of roles in politics and government. He's active in veterans affairs, serving as the first statewide commander of the Grand Army of the Republic in Indiana. I found a great anecdote about him during a reunion. I'm going to read this passage to you. He was known to his army friends as Nate Kimball and stood specially high in the esteem of Grant, Sherman, and Sheridan. With the last named, he was on particularly intimate termed terms. At a reunion of the Army of the Tennessee, General Kimball arose to make a motion which did not at the time meet the approval of the distinguished commander who presided, Sheridan, and who knew a great deal more of military law than parliamentary usage. Sit down, Nate Kimball, sit down, Sheridan exclaimed. If you don't sit down, I'll put you in the guardhouse. You can imagine the roars of laughter that went through the hall during the reunion when little Sherman is bellowing about Kimball going to the guardhouse. Kimball goes on to live until 1898. He dies at age 75, and his death makes headlines in newspapers across the country. So there you have it, a tip of the cap to the commander of the Gibraltar Brigade, Brevet Major General Nathan Kimball, who defeated Lee and Jackson during the Civil War. Thanks for listening. We'll see you on the next episode of Life on the Civil War Research Trail.